save percentages. Like he's always he's the last couple of years he's been just as good as you know the starting goalie. But uh, if you even want to call it that, because it's kind of just been rotating their guys. Mm-hmm. So you know he has the confidence in him. You know I think it was a way to just shake things up a bit and get the team back on track and you know worked out for him. Yeah. Um. I mean, the game game seven was just a domination from the Islanders. Um, it was I think an Islanders game like during five and six were too. Yeah, like the the Flyers got lucky that they won those games. Mm-hmm. Like he, they um, um, like um, yeah, like they got dominated in the shot count, in possession, every which way, and Berlanga didn't really play well. The Flyers capitalized on their chances in both those games, and they win it in overtime, even though they really didn't deserve to. Like this, if um, this game really, like with how both teams were playing, probably should have been over in five. The Islanders should have won it in five, but I guess a combination of heart and also like Varlama of not playing the greatest, like they got mm-hmm. to game seven, but it really shouldn't have been there. Yeah. I'm not surprised that this is how like the series turned out. Mm-hmm. If the Flyers had won it, they just would have like stolen a series that they really didn't deserve to win. And I would not have been confident at all of them going up against uh, Tampa. And I, you know, it's interesting that we, you say too that in the series that they didn't deserve to win because going into it on paper you say, oh okay the Flyers oh yeah have yeah the better roster and I think part of that is coaching I think Trotz like just tactically outwitted Vino for the most part <laughs> yeah just was able to enforce their game plan against Philly. Trust me, I, I know plenty about Vino being a Rangers fan. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's he he is not really a good big in game adjustment type of coach at all and that's what really frustrates me about him uh but the flyers have to deal with that now not me uh, as a fan um of the rangers um but yeah Schrott's basically just spanked uh, and you behind the bench so like, <laughs> it's just how it went and the flyers also like i'm not sure they ever played up to their potential much like boston but they had a good round robin they looked good going into it but um the Canadians kept it like really close when um, it probably shouldn't have been, and then the Islanders just outplayed them tactically, and uh, you know it's really disappointing considering I had them winning the cup. <laughs> how it turned out. I think as if you're a Flyers fan though, you can still be pretty optimistic. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah, you have yeah. some guys getting older, but you have some young guys who are coming through. The team, this the Flyers have always been in and out of the playoffs, like in one year, out the other year. I think this seems like they have a more sustainable. They have a more sustainable bunch, and they have goaltending now. Which yeah, is exactly. That's the big difference. They have mm-hmm. Carter Hart yeah. behind in the pipes. They have a solid roster. They have everything they need. They just gotta put it together, like they did in the regular season. Like going into this, they were the best team in the league. Yeah. Um, and it looked like they're gonna continue that with how they were playing in round robin play, but uh, it just didn't. Um, and it wasn't that they like were awful in games like five and six, but like they just weren't just compared to the Islanders, like, it's pretty clear who should have won. Yeah, I think, um, I think Philly, we never really saw that, like, juggernaut dominance from Philly throughout the playoffs, really. Um, you know, I mean, they beat Montreal as they should, um, and, you know, I never really saw that, like, domination number one team from them that I was looking for that, you know, I thought, hey, they would win the Cup. Um, And the Islanders, I mean, the the Islanders just, they really are, like, kind of like the Blue Jackets in terms of, like, you know, what we were saying. They have guys that just can score timely goals. Um, I mean, and they have a lot of them. Um, So forward, also, I want to ask one more thing. While I'm, while I'm seeking, what's up with Andrew Ladd? Because he's like, he signed to like a, a six million, like he's like six million on their cap. And it's just like, it's just like dead weight. Well, they tried to trade him. Remember it was rumored during the deadline that they wanted to trade Ladd for like Parise? Yeah. Which was crazy. I, get like, I don't remember why the deal didn't go through, but I got it didn't. Um, Have you just been injured for like the past two years? He's got, was it Lad? I don't think it maybe it wasn't Lad. They're trading. He's got three years left at five and a half. Yeah, I was just, I thought that was interesting because I was looking through their cap and I was like, 
wait, I, I injured like he played, they, four, he played four games this year. Yeah. And had thirty four games in the AHL, which I guess was maybe for conditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was interesting that he's on their cap for that much. Um played one game for the playoffs. But if you're the Flyers, what do you do like during the off season to make your team better and like you know, try to make a push to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and Stanley Cup, et cetera. Uh, you got something next? Hmm. Sorry, I was cutting out a bit. Um, I missed part of that. I was saying, if you're the Flyers, what do you do to, to make that Stanley Cup run? Uh, I mean, obviously they did this year, but, you know, just to make your team better and um, hopefully try to make a cup-winning roster. Um, I, I honestly, I, I really do think it's there. Um, it's it's there, it just, like, a lot of things just have to click, which, like, for, like, everything, for every um, contending team, things have to click. Like, there's aspects that you come up against, things don't go your way. Um, you get, you run into, like, a white-hot team um, or, like, a, just a tactical team like the Islanders and it falls apart, but, you know, it's hard to say like what they should add because I, I really think just up and down the roster, they have what's there. What they need is Giroux and Voracek and those guys to actually like, put up points in the playoffs, which yep. they really didn't do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They need they need uh you have like Kevin Hayes like who played really well. Yeah. Um, but it was it was like your middle six and like your depth that was the only people really contributing like <laughs> scoring wise. Um, you need your star players to be there and get the goals and also have your depth um, clicking as well. Um, but I, uh, as in terms of assets, I feel like everything's there. Um, I, I'm confident that this roster, if they put it all together, can win a cup. Um, but then again, they just have to put it all together. Everything needs to go right. Uh, you think their blue line's good enough? You yeah, that's a good question. Get it done. That's a good question. Like, is Tovarov like? He's. Or you know, I think he is. On the blue line. Is, well, there, is, he, is a real number one? Is Ghost a number one? Is. I think he is. He's he's only twenty three, still room to like get in better, um, and I think he is like um, he is a, a top two D on most on basically any team in the NHL. I'd take him as a top two D, for being a number one D. Some teams like he wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's a top pairing D on almost any team in the league. Not um, New York. I think Pro Brown <laughs> can do it. Um, he can be the guy that you build your blue line around. Niskanen's pretty solid. He also spare. Obviously he's had trouble like recently, but he is a good player, at least offensively. And, um, if he can find his game, if they don't ship him out, you know, like he's solid. Sanheim solid. Yeah, Sanheim is um, good. Maybe like. Maybe you can work on your uh, bottom pairing, but I don't know. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fair. I think if they, they can click, if their defense can. Really, I really think Proverov's the job. Like, can, I, I think they can do it. I think they're blowing. Looking, taking a closer look at it. Yeah. If everyone plays up to their potential, I think it can get it done. Miskinen was a good pickup as well. He was really good for them at the stretch. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think defense was ever like really an issue, like with the Flyers. Like um, it was uh, it was more Islanders defense, <laughs> um, <laughs> and penalties. Um, like you have goaltending, and you have if you have goaltending like Carter Hart, like you can have an av you can have an average defense. Yeah. Anyways. I agree. Yeah. Um, but they also the Flyers defense doesn't have to be average. They can be above average. Like I feel like they can be above average with what they have. Mm -hmm. Even uh, even without Carter Hart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have confidence in their blue line for sure. They're at least their top four. Yeah, I feel so bad for you Nolan know, Patrick and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he just can't. Like the the roster could really use a guy like him mm -hmm. if he was if he was healthy. Yeah. No. You hate to see it. And they could have had Haskin and. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. Yeah, we we'll get to him. Yeah, Con Smythe yeah, candidate. Yeah, really well. The Con Smythe candidate. Favorite, honestly, oh, at this baby. point. Honestly. Um, I was hoping, bro, if, if Vegas won, dude, how cool that would have been if Theodore won, dude. Like, he's just... I I, I love Shea Theodore. I think he's such a good player. 
and he's just so underrated in, in all facets of the game. But anyways, speaking of Shea Theodore, let's move on to the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, Vegas wins in seven games against Vancouver. Um, you know, got to tip my hat off to Vancouver, man. Like, they just, they fought so hard. Um, their Vancouver goal to Demko's. Yeah, yeah, Demko. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Demko, holy Jesus. God. Yeah, like, I was, par like, you know, having Vegas winning, I was like, sh I was like, shit. Because Demko game six was, like, insane. And I was like, are, are the Knights going to score a goal tonight, you know, to, like, win, the, to win know, this the game? The the uh, the stars should probably give Demko a ring if they end up winning the cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that when we they talk about Vegas in the next round. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that um, later. But um, yeah, you know that's that they those three games really are going to put uh, Vancouver in an interesting situation this summer with their goaltending. Mm. Realistically, you don't want to like make rash decisions over a sample size of three games, but you know, we've been they've been talking about Demko being like a future franchise starter for a while now. Mm -hmm. Maybe this was like the the his coming out party, even if it's only three games. Yeah. But even though they're three games, like they're three critical games, all elimination games, and putting up a nine eighty five, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Just like, yeah. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. They've been hyping up. They, they've been hyping up Demko for for years now. At one point, that he was like their only prospect that like gave him any hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like you've been talking him up. I you gotta. I think it's time that you you, get, you put him to the test. I mean, Marsha. Marsha's gonna demand demand bank. Yeah, and he's you know, and he deserves it the way he's played. Yeah. Yep. But when you look at guys who are up soon for Vancouver, like it'd be really nice if De if they could just have Demko be the guy. Yeah. Like, obviously, signing Markstrom makes your team better, but with the contracts they have coming exactly. up and whatnot, if they can go to Demko, I think they should. I think it's the best for the rest of their team in the long court, like, long-term future. It's such Especially a cap saver. Cap. Yeah, it's such a cap saver for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think um, Leonard was – we also got to talk about – you know, I mean, Leonard was absolutely fabulous in the series. Um you know, you had that whole dynamic of, you know, Flurry's agent. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know that. Um, yeah, of you course. Know, yeah. Saying, you stabbed. know, basically, yeah. Stabbed, stabbed by his... I mean, it worked. Yeah. You do that games. <laughs> um, you know. The board caved. You gotta yeah. not not only that, but I feel like you do like have to give your hats off to DeVore in playing Leonard Game Seven. I mean, Leonard was absolutely fabulous in Game Seven. And you could have played Flurry, and you know, you know, you could have played Flurry, and not only that, but if you start Leonard and you lose, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my God!" Like, if only we played Flurry Game Seven, like blah blah blah. Um, so I, I really got it. We'll get to that too. We'll get to that too in the next round. But like Vegas Twins yeah, have like such a hard on for Flurry. They did like, that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, um, yeah, it ended up being that way. Like. But we'll get to that when we talk about Vegas next round. But um, yeah, the Burr, the Burr definitely made uh, the right decision playing Lena that game. I also he's, uh, he's incredible. I also think we did see part of the reason why Vegas won this series. We did see some of uh, weakness in Vancouver's bottom six. Um, you know, we saw the line. It was like Tuck, Roy, Cousins, um, like just dominated on the ice compared to Vancouver's third and fourth. Um, you know, Vegas is just deeper. And that's that. Um, and I think that was a big reason why they won this series. Um, yeah. But Vancouver's top six, man, wow. I mean, they were just spectacular. I mean, you know, on all those nasty, I mean, I'm sure you guys saw those nasty breakaway goals. I mean, they were just. Tyler Mott, oh, oh my God. God. Um, just to Scott Pedersen out of this filthy, go like, they just had some nasty goals. And, like, they do not miss out on, like, scoring opportunities. Like, they. Like, they cash in on their scoring opportunities. It, it is really impressive to watch. Um, and They're going to be a fun team for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Very they, have, they have nothing to be... Vancouver like, fans shouldn't have anything to be worried about. Everything I've seen has been them, like, being very proud of the team. Like, exactly. I've seen, like, like, I've they seen lost to the better team. 
but they, you know, they have a lot to look forward to in the future. I've seen absolutely, I've seen basically zero negativity online, like from Canucks fans. Like they all seem like really happy with how it, how this uh, whole bubble playoff turned out for them, and yeah. they should be. Um, of course, it was it was really impressive just um, this roster, and especially I'd like to point out JT Miller. Mm-hmm. Just what an absolute, what an absolute stud. Yeah. Like, this guy, like, he's finally like. Like, he was with the Rangers for so many years, and we were all waiting for him to break out and become, like, the star, um, basically a star player that we knew he could be. And it just didn't work here. He goes to Tampa, plays okay, but, like, it was kind of more of the same. And then he finds System his way guy. into Vancouver, and it just all clicks, and he becomes um, basically a leader. And absolute, he pushes play for the team, and it was a perfect fit. And, you know, he, he was one of the main reasons why... Um, they got past uh, St. Louis. Um, he's one of the re- main reasons that this uh, this went to seven. Um, Miller is just very, very impressive, and I really 